Good morning to Coming to Life Church. Today is Tuesday, May 10th, and we are on day six of the Bible reading plan, Knowing and Enjoying God. And today we are assigned 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. So if you could turn to that in your Bible or you know, open your Bible app, whatever it is that you prefer to uh, read uh, our, our scripture together. And uh, if you don't mind, let's actually uh, read that aloud together. All right, so uh, this is what Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica. So let's read together one, two, three, and to aspire to live quietly and to your and to mind your own affairs and to work with your hands as we instructed. Amen. You know, if you look at the devotional part of our reading, there is you know the image for the day, and there's a quote from a gentleman by the name of Thomas Watson, and it says. Beware of idleness. Satan sows most of his seed in follow ground. And just in case you don't know what follow uh, means or follow land is, which I didn't, I had to look it up. It's where you do all the work to uh, ready uh, to prepare the soil to sow seed and you do nothing with it. All right. So it's like you put all this effort into uh, readying the soil so that you can uh, in preparation of, you know, possibly having a great harvest and whatever laziness or whatever, you do nothing with it. You know, Watson's warning uh, about idleness is something that is relevant to any area of life. Charles Spurgeon is actually someone who was mentored by Thomas Watson. And he kind of echoes the same sentiment about idleness by saying, the most likely man to go to hell is a man who has nothing to do on earth. And I know that's kind of a bold statement, but if you think about it, it's true. You know, when we think about every Christian who is walking this earth, uh, every individual that's still vertical or, or breathing has the opportunity to continually serve God and His kingdom because if we're still breathing, then God still has a purpose for us. We still have something to complete for uh, God using our, our lives. And so when we take that statement and weigh it against what Paul is saying in First Thessalonians, the sentiment is to continue working, laboring for the kingdom of God. So when we look at chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians, Paul is actually encouraging the church to be adamant and mindful about living a life that is pleasing to God. That entails uh, refraining from engaging in certain things. That entails being intentional and loving toward one another. And that entails living a life of holiness. But that also means being active with our lives. So when you get to verse 11, and if you were to read that out of con context, it becomes easy to be, to be mistaken to think that when Paul says, uh, live quietly and to mind your own affairs, right, to think, uh, to walk away thinking that Paul is saying, like, look the other way and pay no attention to what is going on in the lives of others. And that's not what Paul is communicating. You see, instead, what Paul is, uh, the message that Paul is trying to get across is, when he says aspire to live quietly, he essentially is meaning we need to have ambition, right? We need to be motivated. We need to have purpose because the reason why Paul is addressing this is because in verse 1 of chapter 4, they, right, being the church of Thessalonica, have been urged on how to walk and how to please God with their living. And so having aspirations that stem out of our faith and what and out of what God is doing in our lives displays how we are walking with the Lord. And so the same thing could be uh, said when we are living a life of idleness or laziness, right? Maybe that reveals that we're just lethargic. We are, are lazy. We lack motivation. And a lack of ambition or a lack of walking of God is going to reveal that I really serve no purpose with my life or I don't even care about the purpose that God has uh, instilled into my life by saving and redeeming me. And our devotional reading this morning says, follow lives reflect no devotion to God and no great pursuit of God. I mean, they're not, they're not even, I don't know reveals, we're not even seeking God, seeking to know Him, seeking to understand our lives in, in further detail. And so idleness is dangerous because we leave room for the devil and in the follow fields of our lives, it actually gives opportunity for Satan to come in and actually sow it with something else. Something that's more reflective of him and not of God. But we can counter idleness by being ambitious. And the ambitiousness we need is something that comes 
as a result of walking with God, or in our case of our Bible reading plan, knowing and enjoying God. And sometimes in order for us to be ambitious, we need to focus in our in on our lives instead of being so concerned about the fo- about the affairs of other people's. And that's why Paul is brings that up. You see, Paul isn't calling for the church to just mind their own business. But there is a difference between the Christian duty, duty of caring for others versus being busy with other people's affairs while neglecting our own selves. And that would be the, our health and wellness, right? And so we can't be so caught up in other people's affairs when we have a lot to work on in our lives. Lastly, Paul tells us to go work with your hands. And work is actually God's plan for the progress of society in the church. I mean, just think of all the nations changed through God's words and those that God has immo- God, God has mobilized and, and used to you know, further His kingdom here on earth to spread the gospel and all, that, all those things. Like, all those things didn't happen out of thin air. God stirred up in the hearts of people and they went and they worked with their hands, literally. But at the same time, there's a reason why Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And that's because of our lack of drive, our lack of ambition, and our laziness. Oftentimes, we want God's blessing and the bearing of fruit to come conveniently without investing time and effort. When in actuality, we've been called to work and labor for the kingdom of God. So church, let us continue to know God. Let us continue to enjoy Him, and as we are walking with Him, would that bring ambition to continually serve Him and live this life for His name's sake. Let us fight idleness by simply spending time with God, and from there would He be the one who is leading us and guiding us into greater things. Until next time, church, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you, and until next time, may you go in peace, amen and amen.